<laughs> Welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. My name is Greg Deckler, and today, of all things, I'm going to be talking once again about Microsoft Fabric. Now, I, I literally, I leave my first video on Microsoft, the obligatory Microsoft Fabric video, because I figured I had, you know, just because Fabric was, you know, this, the new thing that was out there, I, had, I was obliged to at least make a video that mentioned it, right? Um, <laughs> but apparently my <laughs> my mistake was um, I, I had an off the cuff remark about Microsoft Fabric it being kind of a nothing burger. Um, and, I've, and, and it's been no secret that I've been rather dismissive about the whole Fabric thing. Um, and it's got me in some controversy and trouble, apparently. Um, which I, it's the thing about me. I, I just, I don't mean to cause controversy and conflict uh, within the community. I just, you know, I have my opinion on things. I'm going to state it. Um, and apparently, sometimes people disagree with me. Um, but uh, here I am once again talking about fabric because I want to hopefully finally, I've tried a number of ways to explain my position on fabric and why I just kind of dismiss it. You know, eh, what I, it is what it is. Um, but so today, hopefully, I'm going to be able. I'm going to take take a step back, try to take a slightly different take on this to explain um, my my position on Microsoft Fabric, um, and hopefully clear up a lot of the confusion about Microsoft Fabric in the community. Uh, that's my real goal here. And I think a lot of the confusion stems from the fact that people are asking the wrong question. They're asking the question, "What is Microsoft Fabric?" And in my opinion, that is the exactly the wrong question to be asking. It, the right question to be asking is, why does Microsoft Fabric exist? And you may think that's a silly question to ask, right? Because, oh, it exists, Greg, so why are we questioning its, its existence? Well, the reason is, is that in order to answer this question, what is Microsoft Fabric? In my opinion, you first have to answer the question, why does Microsoft Fabric exist? Okay, so let's get into this. Um, now, to answer why Microsoft Fabric exists, you really have to kind of dial the, the clock back, the Wayback Machine back about a decade ago, roughly a decade ago. And this is the, a decade ago is kind of the origin of the two analytics platforms that we have today, right? We have Power BI, and we have Azure Synapse. Okay, uh, in this intervening decade between the, these, this origin and, and today, is really kind of the tale of two analytics platforms, right? You have Power BI, which from humble beginnings just, you know, exceeded beyond all expectations, you know, beating back uh, entrenched competitors, Tableau, Click, to become, you know, probably the data analytics platform, reporting platform that has the most market share that's out there. And then, so wildly successful. Then you have Azure Synapse, which could best be described as mediocre commercial success. I think that's being probably generous. Um, it was competing, you know, it was thought, you know, with Microsoft to Azure Synapse Analytics was really, you know, it had entrenched competitors like Teradata and Hadoop and that at the time, but really it faced really stiff competition from uh, new new uh, competitors that appeared in that time frame, Snowflake, Databricks, et cetera. And so, you know, Power BI, wildly successful, uh, Azure Synapse. Okay, so, Again, Power BI started a decade ago, roughly, as the power tools within Excel, right? And, you know, and you had the power tools in Excel. You had this entrenched, you know, Excel community really latched onto these tools. But really, Power BI was a completely different technology than Excel. And they just kind of slapped the UI on top of Excel um, to be able to interface with these technologies, Power Query, and that sort of thing. People really liked it, um, but Excel was not a great visualization platform. Um, not to the extent of like Tableau or Click and things like that. So Microsoft created Power BI Publisher, more of a Canvas-based type of approach, uh, interacting visuals, all of that kind of fun stuff, right? And they, you know, they they experimented with SharePoint, which was god awful as kind of the publishing service. Um, I, trust me, I lived through it. It was god awful. Um, they finally, you know, <laughs> came to their senses and like, no, we're just gonna build this from scratch, right? <laughs> like uh, SharePoint, go away. Um, we're just going to build our own service, you know, a web-based service and that, so we can publish this stuff out. Anyway, long story short, wildly successful. Great, great product, right? People love Power BI. It's it's adopted, you know, number one analytics platform probably that's out there. Okay, 
the the origin story of Azure Synapse is probably a little murkier and mur murkier. Oh, boy, I can't talk today. Murkier and uh, probably maybe not as well known um, if you haven't been following this stuff for like and been a data wonk and geek like I am. Um, but the origins of Azure Synapse about a decade ago was something called the Parallel Data Warehouse. So here we go, SQL Server 2012, Parallel Data Warehouse. Again, roughly a decade ago. Um, and this in and so while the office folks were over there, you know, playing with their tinker toys and how cute is that? Really, you know, Microsoft, the real investment um, and the real data engineering and, you know, the real, you know, where all the money was being spent was on this parallel data warehouse. This was Microsoft's answer to Hadoop uh, primarily, as well as like Teradata and things that were out there at the time. Um, and there was a you know, huge amount of marketing campaign that went into the parallel data warehouse, as well as Microsoft had a whole certification process for vendors to uh, hardware vendors to certify their their products for use as as an appliance essentially parallel data warehouse was an, it was an appliance more or less right but it was a i would could only characterize it as a complete commercial flop um in my opinion it never really took off it was bad timing right right around this time frame the you know no, nobody wanted to build in on-prem infrastructure anymore they all wanted it to be in the cloud um, so this whole concept of an on-prem appliance that you put into your data data center and that sort of stuff is just terrible timing, right? So Microsoft took, you know, the technologies that were part of this parallel data warehouse and they tried to cloudify it, right? And they initially it was called the Microsoft Analytics Platform System or APS. Um, <laughs> and if you doubt the veracity of anything that I'm saying here as far as the history of this thing, there's, I'll link this doc in the, uh, this doc right here in the in the description. And so what's the difference between Azure Synapse from like SQL DW and Azure Synapse Analytics Workspace? And if you come down here, it's like you know, Microsoft adapted its massively parallel process on-premise appliance to cloud as Azure SQL Data Warehouse or SQL DW for short. Historians will remember the appliance was named Parallel Data Warehouse and then Analytics Platform System, which still powers many on-premises data warehousing solutions today. I think that the word many there is used quite loosely. Um, so anyway, this goes through the entire history. Everything I've told you, this is so what is Azure Synapse today, today or Synapse in Synapse Analytics and stuff really started life as the Parallel Data Warehouse, then the Analytics Platform System, and then SQL, Azure SQL Data Warehouse, SQL DW, and then became Synapse, okay? So that's, that's the intervening decade. That's what happened. Um, but again, this never really took off. Um, not nearly to the extent of what Power BI did. Okay, so if I'm a Microsoft exec, right, and I'm taking a look at, you know, the products in my portfolio, I've got basically two analytics systems. I've got Power BI, which is wildly successful, and I've got Azure Synapse, which is just kind of lingered in mediocrity this entire time, as far as commercially. Uh, and it's it's up against stiff competition with a Snowflake and Databricks, et cetera, et cetera. So if I'm a Microsoft exec and I'm taking a look at this, I'm like, hmm, well, let me go uh, grab my my uh, Microsoft playbook off the shelf. Let's take a look through it. Oh, you know, there's there's this entry on Internet Explorer. How did we as Microsoft take a you know second rate, you know, crappy browser and beat out you know the number one competitor in the market, Netscape? Oh, we uh, oh, we bundled it with with Windows and made it the de facto browser and oh, oh success. Oh, okay. Well, you know, how did this? I got this Power BI here. How did we? How did we make that commercially viable? Just thumb through the plate. Oh, we we bundled the technology with Excel. So we had a, you know, this entrenched loyal user base of Excel. We introduced these new tools to them, and oh, it was successful. You know, hmm. Yeah. I wonder how could I make Azure Synapse successful? Well, what if? What if I just bundled it with the product that I currently had? have that's wildly successful Power BI. And I can just, you know, basically bundle it with it. And then I'll introduce this Azure, these Azure Synapse workloads, you know, with, you know, to an entrenched loyal user base of Power BI users. And then I can make it successful because I've got this sunk cost fallacy going on here where I've, I've literally spent billions and billions of dollars on this platform. You know, I've got to make it a success. So I can't just, you know, say there, you know, because I've already got integration between Azure Synapse and Power BI. I can't just come out and say, 
well, we've got better integration, right? We can uh, point a workspace to an Azure Synapse and enable the workloads. Now it's got to be, got to be more than that. It's got to be tight, more tightly coupled, right? Than that, it's got, and we have to have this huge, massive marketing camp. We got to, we got to make a splash about this. This has got to be the new, new thing, you know. And we got to make it big. Got to make it big. Microsoft Fabric. <laughs> what is Microsoft Fabric? They've taken and bundled Azure Synapse with Power BI, right, in a licensing bundle. Okay, they've they've, they've launched this massive marketing campaign. Microsoft Fabric is the new new thing, right? And they they slapped a UI on top of Power BI that services Azure Synapse Analytics workloads. Why does Microsoft Fabric exist? Microsoft Fabric exists to make Azure Synapse successful. Finally, hopefully, that's it. So, what is Microsoft Fabric? It's Microsoft's last gasp ditch attempt to make Azure Synapse commercially viable as a product. Otherwise, it just rides off into the sunset and it's never be heard from again. Because Snowflake and Databricks and these other, you know, things that beat Microsoft to the punch, you know, have eaten their has eaten their lunch. So, hopefully, once and for all, I've been able to answer why my position on Microsoft Fabric is what it is. Um, and hopefully this clears up a lot of the confusion in the community about what Microsoft Fabric is. I, I think that a lot of it, the Power BI people are approaching it from the perspective that maybe they've never really toyed around with Azure Synapse and, oh, one last thing on this. So what about Azure Data Factory? <laughs> Why the heck is that thing in there? Well, because Azure Synapse and Azure Data Factory have sort of been tied to the hip uh, from the get-go. Um, so Azure Synapse pipelines and data flows are really built on Azure Data Factory technology. So if you're going to bring Azure Synapse along for the ride, you know, you got to bring, you know, Azure Data Factory along with it. All right. So again, I think Power BI people are looking at, at the, a lot of the confusion is, well, what the heck does this do for Power? It does nothing for Power BI. The, the whole purpose of PI Fabric is to make, is really focused on Azure Synapse and to make Azure Synapse successful. The way to do that is to surface those workloads within an existing successful product and bundle those two together and tie them at the hip, even though it's rather loosely, right, via a UI. Um, and that's all it is. That's all it is, people. So hopefully this explains myself um, and my position on this. Um, hopefully it clears up confusion. I'm sure that people will disagree with me and 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 hate what I have to say, but that's that's okay. This is my honest just honest opinion on this. So hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.